Welcome to the Third Generation Wrestling Podcast with your hosts, Eric and Rob. All right. Welcome in. Welcome in. Here we are at the GW on Money in the Bank weekend. Also, the return of the fans, return of the crowds, full arenas, and yet again of the WWE Universe. I have your host, The Real Big E, my co-host, Rob the Ambassador. How you doing? How you feeling? I'm doing good, feeling even better. Man, what an atmosphere tonight on SmackDown. Full capacity, I believe there was uh, over 14,000 people sold out arena in Houston and a uh, hot crowd just like you would expect, it was a great atmosphere. It was. Uh, I mean, it couldn't have <laughs> – it, it was what I expected it to be. And I love Vince McMahon coming out there. <laughs> Where the hell you been? <laughs> yeah, that was it. And he just walks he, off. He came out and did power off. walk, and then where the hell you been? And then power walked right off. That's none, – none more to say. Nope. You know, if he would take that same approach with the subtlety in his storylines, the product would probably do better than the worst ratings they've ever had of all time. So, yeah, that's a whole nother show right there. Yeah. Um, I did notice, you know, some, you know, we had talked about it like, how the crowd, how would the crowd, React to Bianca, Roman. Um, well, I, I think, well, Drew's on Raw, so we haven't seen that reaction yet. But as far as tonight goes, I think it was it was pretty much what it, what it should have been. I freaking loved Roman giving it right back to the fans when they was getting on him. Finally, he's in a role where he can do that. Uh, mocking the fans, like, yes, yes, that's that's what I want. That's what yeah, I want. Man. Yeah, I was loving it. Uh, I'm still waiting for that promo. It's got to come one of these coming. days. Yeah, it's got to come coming. one of these days. I'm still looking forward to that promo where he really gives it back to the fans. I, I, I can't wait. Yeah. Um, had a surprise. Surprise return. Not to WWE, but to the main roster. Prince Balor. I, I I did not see that coming. I had heard no rumors about that, and it. I, I just hope that they do them right this time. That's all I can say. Yeah, I'm in agreement, and and I love it when you get a surprise pop like that. In this day and age of social media, somehow the secret always gets out, but WWE managed to keep this one, and it was great, unexpected, and I uh, loved it. Shachi and Knox, how do you feel about that? I don't really – I know we, we both kind of not a fan of the whole one-name thing. I don't know if it's just because they're a tag team and they're doing this, but you're going to have a female character named Knox. At least give her Tegan, not Knox. Well, I'm just surprised that Tegan Knox is on the main roster. I mean, I'm I'm happy for her. She has – struggled to find her way on NXT because unfortunately she's had a couple of serious injuries. So to bring her back and then put her right to the main roster, um, kind of surprising, but we'll see how it works out. I'm happy for Shotzi. I think Shotzi will be great on the main roster, but Tegan, she never really made her way on NXT. So to put her at the main roster to me seems, uh, I don't know, it seems a little, a little hasty. Yeah, but you never know. Some people just thrive better on the main roster than they do in NXT. And True. That could be Sing the case. Swim and, uh, I, I'm, and I'm hoping she swims. I like Tegan Knox, and I know she's fought through adversity, and so I am rooting for her. I'm just surprised that uh, she's there already. Yeah. So, uh, looks like they gave us one of the matches that was supposed to be on this, the card Sunday tonight, 
with Bianca versus Carmella for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Not mad about it, really. I understand kind of, you know, Bailey got hurt. And that's kind of why they did this. And they needed to give the live audience something, some, some good. I actually felt like these two worked well together. I don't know what it is about Bianca and Bailey. They just don't. But Carmella, excuse me, far better dance partner. I enjoyed this match, and we got that whip again. I don't think it was quite as thunderous as the one that she gave to Sasha. But uh, I, don't think so uh, I think this was still a good match. I enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm with you on that. I enjoyed it as well. I was disappointed that the Bailey match wasn't going to happen, even though Bianca and Bailey have not worked well together. But, like you said, sometimes the chemistry is just better between two wrestlers that you don't expect would have good chemistry. I think that was the case with both of these ladies. It was a good show tonight. I think having the hot crowd there maybe helped a little bit. The atmosphere, probably they, they both stepped it up a little bit. But whatever the reason, it was a great match. Good. Maybe great is saying a little too much, but it was definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was good. It was good. <clears throat> okay. And then I thought the uh, Fatal 4-Way was also good. I like the spot with Kevin Owens off the ladder. I don't like that really hurt. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and of course, the Friday Night Idiot picking up the win. A, a pretty a nice finish, though. I will say that the finish was cool giving the stomp to Big E on the ladder, even though I don't know if that imagery is what you want to see on TV. But <laughs> um, in any event, I thought it set up for a, a good setup for what we got coming this Sunday. Um, overall, a, a, a pretty good SmackDown. It, it should do a good rating because the fans are back. And, you know, finally got those reactions. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, if nothing else, having the crowd back, the atmosphere, you know, if, if you take away the crowd, like if, if these same matches took place in Thunderdome, they're still solid matches, but there's just something about that atmosphere that brings it up. So everything about the show, the energy got me more pumped for Money in the Bank than I was before tonight. Yeah, I think this is probably outside of Mania, probably going to be the most anticipated and watch show just because of the fan perspective, the fan aspect of being there. So, all right. Without any further ado, let's get into these predictions, my man. Ambassador, kicking off with you, sir. AJ Styles and almost defending the tag team championships, the Raw tag team championships against the Viking Raiders. Who you got? Hmm. Tough on the call. Almas and AJ hasn't worked for me. I thought that was a bad tagging to begin with. AJ, as I've said, I think is the best wrestler in the world. Almost has shown me a little something, but I still don't think they work as a tag team. I'm going to call the upset and say that the Raiders win this one. And then they'll let AJ go on and, and uh, do some things individually. Maybe even Almost gets some individual work. He had his first singles match Monday, so maybe they'll, they'll try him out more uh, as a singles wrestler, but I, I'm going to pick the upset. Viking Raiders. Yeah, normally, I would agree, and I do think that the, the split's coming. But I think it's not quite time yet. Uh, I will give the nod to almost in, in AJ, just because AJ's been losing a lot lately. So, I think he, they need to pick up this win, and then at SummerSlam, that's when they do the split and the uh, they'll drop the belts. I don't know to who. Probably still the Viking Raiders. Probably have a rematch. and uh, But they'll probably just do it then. I think it'll be a good match, though. Probably a lot of AJ shenanigans. But that's kind of what he's been doing lately. So, Okay. I don't know how you feel about this feud. At this point, they haven't really handled it the best way. Uh, Rhea Ripley defending her Raw Women's Championship against Charlotte Flair for the umpteenth time. <laughs> Do we even care anymore? But who you got? I've got Rhea. 
I don't see any reason right now to take it off over, even though Charlotte is a credible opponent. This, this build up to this feud has just been terrible. That promo they both did uh, with both of them on crutches. Ugh, uh, week that ago, was so cringe. That was just one of the worst things I, I have ever seen either of these women be involved with. But I do think the match will deliver. But I am going to say Rhea retains. <sighs> Tough one. I, I I think this depends on where the women's Money in the Bank ladder match is placed versus this match is placed. I think this will be a good time for a swerve to get the belt off Rhea. So neither one of the neither one of them have it. So Rhea will probably win the match, but she'll be worn out, and then somebody will potentially cash in. But as far as the match goes, I, I'll, I'll agree. I'll say Rhea gets the win, but I don't think she leaves money in the bank as the champion. Interesting. Okay. Well, no, no. What better segue than the women's money in the bank ladder match? Asuka versus Naomi versus Alexa Bliss versus Nikki Ash versus Liv Morgan versus Zelina Vega. Natalia and Tamina. Man, I don't, I don't know how I feel about this field. Oh, I know how I feel about it. Outside of Oscar, <laughs> I, I think it's garbage. Yeah, outside of Oscar, and I'll say outside of Oscar and Naomi, it's 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 pretty shitty. Um, I I I'm smelling smelling boo shit on that match. Um. <laughs> But I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb. I'm gonna say Nikki Ash wins. I think they're gonna get behind her. I think the fans are gonna be behind her. I'm gonna I'm, I'm picking her, Nikki. Man, I would love to pick Oscar, but she won it last year. <sighs> Believe it or not, when I first saw this gimmick of Nikki's, I thought it was just trash, but. Nikki is so good and so cute in it. She, she's making it work. I'm not saying I'm crazy about it. Right. I do think the crowd will be behind her. Damn, man, this field is so bad. <laughs> I hate to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I'm going to go with Alexa. I'm going to say her and Lily become the oh, money man. in the bank winners. And... and I, I hate it. You know I don't like that gimmick, but uh, that's that's my prediction. Well, yeah, I know you hate it, and you're probably not that far off, but I'm hoping they go the other way as far as the gimmicks go. But anyway, Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio defend their tag team championships against the Usos. Uh, I don't know how in the hell. Well, I do know how, actually. Uh, you get your fourth, fifth DUI, and you don't get any type of punishment whatsoever. In fact, you get more TV time. I mean, that I don't know why your last name. I forgot. I have forgotten that it even happened. I forgot that he even got arrested because they right. WWE's acting like like he didn't get arrested. The Anawaii family is are the Kennedys of wrestling. You just you just you can't touch them. So, uh, but anyway, I, I think the Usos are going to win. I don't really, I mean, they haven't really done shit with Dominic and Ray since they've won the tag titles. They haven't pushed them. They haven't given them an interesting storyline. Um, it makes more sense for the Usos to have it, for the bloodline to have it. And, uh, yeah, I'm going Usos. You know what? I agree. I think that they need to do something with Jimmy and Jay. You have this faction with Roman who – is the big dog, the tribal chief, and you got to get some gold. Besides Roman, to legitimize these guys, you got to get them some gold. So I'm going to say that they uh, win. They get over on the, the Stereos. Okay. The men's Money in the Bank ladder match. Ricochet, John Morrison, Riddle, Drew McIntyre, Big E, Kevin Owens, King Nakamura and Seth, 
I almost I wanted to say it, but I just I couldn't get it out. <laughs> I just can't get it out. I was right there. I was Friday Night Idiot, Seth Rollins. Uh, this is actually this is tough, actually. Um, because I I could see this going so many different directions. Because all everybody in this match except Drew, uh, everybody else has the potential to get a push. Have and Drew is the only one that has been WWE champion. Oh no, I take that back. Kevin Owens was Universal champion, I guess, and Seth Rollins was WWE champion too. So like, okay, so there's three people, but half the field have not been champion. I think that's the smarter way to go. At least I'm hoping that's the way they go. So. Mm. I'm going to go against the grain and go against my own judgment. I'm going to go against what I want to happen. But I'm going with what I believe is going to happen. It's going to piss me off. But I'll guarantee you this probably is going to happen. They're going to give it to fucking Riddle. So I'm picking Riddle. Oh. You know what, man? I hate to say it, but I'm in agreement. And here's why. A guy like Big E, a guy like McIntyre, I don't, I don't think they want them to win the title that way. Right. Where you know a guy's taking a beat down, and you you kind of creep in after the guy's been beaten, and, and that's how you win. I think they want Big E, guys like him and McIntyre to look strong to just win matches straight up, championship matches. But a guy like Riddle. Even though I'm not crazy about him, I, I think the crowd will pop for him. And I think there's a lot of stuff they can do with him having the belt. He, he'll come up with all these silly little catchphrases. Um, oh, yeah. And oh, the he'll, crowd he'll, will eat he'll, it he'll, up. <laughs> and when he decides. He'll do all kinds of stuff with the briefcase and shit. You know, it, it's it's made for him. Yeah, yeah. And when he does finally cash in, the crowd will pop for it. And we know the history. 80% of the people who cash in win. And even though I think it would be crazy, I could see them even putting the strap on him. So I'm, I'm in agreement. I'm going to say Riddle comes out the winner. Crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Hope hope we're wrong. <laughs> hope we're really wrong about that one. Okay. Yeah. Roman Reigns versus Edge for the Universal Championship. Based on the night and the last few weeks, it's 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 hard to predict because they did bring Edge back and he has yet to you know achieve his goal which was to become Universal Champion. He lost at Mania. So, he, it look, it would look as though this is his moment. But with the fact that Reigns, he's gotten the best of Reigns and the Usos over the last few weeks. So, that tells me that he's not going to win. At least not right now. So, right as of right now, I'm thinking Reigns is going to remain the champ. For now, um, so that's my pick. Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns. Yeah, I agree. I think it'll be a good match. And I'm not saying I think it's a slam dunk, but I think they want Reigns as champ going into SummerSlam. That's a huge card. They're in Vegas. They're at Reliance Stadium. It's a huge stadium. They want to sell that out. And I don't think you could sell a rematch between Reigns and Edge if Edge were to win. So I think you could with Roman as the I champion. Think you could. I don't think you could. Now, I mean, I, I that well, look, maybe you could. I guess you could, but I don't think it's as good of a sell if some of the rumors we're hearing. You know. It, it, with Reigns yeah. as the champ, there's so many different ways you could go. If Edge is the champ, 
the only way you can go that that would even generate interest is if is the rematch with the Reigns. That's the only way to go. Right. If you're going to you know to have a match that headlines SummerSlam with Reigns, you can have Reigns against Rollins, Reigns against Goldberg if you want to do that, Reigns against Cena if you believe the rumors. There, Reigns against almost anybody can top the card. Edge can only top the card against Reigns. So I, I think they're going to keep Reigns as champ so they have options. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to do that, well, I don't know what their plan is for Mania, but they're obviously going to do some long-term booking for that. So they're trying to line that up, obviously. But uh, I just think there's it's not time yet. It's not time yet. Okay, and last but not least, Bobby Lashley defending his WWE Championship against Kofi Kingston. I am so glad they had him get serious this past Monday. It's probably the best thing they've done with him since he won the championship and beat Drew McIntyre at Mania to, to retain. This is the best thing they've done with him. He he got I – like, I, I really enjoyed that. I, I can't believe I'm saying this. But that was the best segment on Raw probably all year when he treated MVP and just told him, enough of this silly-ass shit, okay? I just lost to this cartoon character, Xavier Woods, because I'm dancing and, and messing with women, messing with you, okay? I'm Bobby Lashley. I am the man. I don't have time for the foolishness anymore, okay? Let's get back to business. And then he tore up the VIP lounge. I mean, throwing through all that furniture, man. I mean, man, whew. he picked up that love seat, threw it, threw it right over the top rope onto the ramp. Like it was nothing. Like it was nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. <sighs> that being said, uh, I like Kofi. You know, I think it'll be a good match. Ain't no way in hell, Lassie losing. There just ain't no way. Mm-hmm. Um, so nope. again, I think it'll be a good quality match, but SummerSlam is the big ticket. So I'm hoping, still hoping and hopeful and praying of a Brock Lesnar return so we can finally have this match, but who knows what they decide to do, but I'm going Bobby Lashley, the almighty Bobby Lashley. Yeah, I am going Bobby Lashley all the way. Now, I do think it will be a good match for as long as it lasts, but I would not be, especially if they're trying to set up the match with Brock. I don't know whether they are or not. I haven't read anything, heard anything outside of the the rumors we've all heard. Uh, But we know what Brock did to Kofi. What a nine-second win. I don't see Lashley doing anything like that, but I do think, we're going to see a vicious Bobby Lashley. And for as long as the match lasts and however good it may be, at the end of the day, Lashley is going to have a convincing win over Kofi. And he will retain to set up either a match with Brock. I I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask you that. Do you think it should be a semi-squash, not a full-on, like, Brock did him, but it should be a defining look, man. Get on up out of here with this bullshit, okay? <laughs> hey, look, if you're trying to put Bobby in the ring, especially with Brock, you have to make this a, a convincing win. And, and like I said, by way of comparison, we already saw what Brock did to Kofi. So if you're going to make Bobby try to look strong against Brock, to me, it seems like you would want to have similar results. So I'm going to say, yeah, I don't. it won't be nine seconds, okay? We're going to get a, a, a decent match, like I said, for as long as it lasts, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes. But at the end of the day, Bobby's going to win clean and convincing. Yeah, he should. He really should. Uh, I think Sunday would be a good show. I'm actually finally looking forward to a WWE show. I have not looked forward to the last couple. And, you know, that was for fans and no fans. I just didn't like the cards. I actually like this card. Money in the Bank does tend to live up to expectations. There's a couple of matches on here that I'm kind of iffy about, but you never know. I could be surprised. I really could be. 
So uh, make sure you come back. Check us out Sunday right after. Well, the video probably won't be up after the show unless we decide to go live. But as of right now, uh, the podcast should be available uh, immediately after the event Sunday. And if you're watching us on YouTube, this is a YouTube exclusive video. So be sure to like, subscribe, share this video and hit us up on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, mostly Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we're, we're mostly active. And Sunday, early Sunday, the prediction, excuse me, the prediction poll will be up in, in live. So you can predict right along with us, tweet along with us during the show that we'll be tweeting as uh, the show goes on. So it should be interesting. It should be a great one. Um, Rob, take us home. Hey, listeners, we love you. We always want to thank y'all. We appreciate y'all, and we want to hear from y'all. Right on. Welcome back, live Hope y'all. Finals. Yes, <laughs> yes. Hope y'all enjoy Money in the Bank, and we'll speak to y'all again in a couple days.